Sonia Paz was just 13 when she left her mother Carol's house in California to spend the summer with her grandparents in Muncie, Indiana. A certified diver, Tanya decided on July 28, 1991, to go scuba diving in a quarry, which she had never done before. Tanya's watched me dive in this quarry, and she'd heard about all the things that were in the bottom of the quarry that you could see as a diver, and so she wanted to go down and see those things that she'd heard about for years. Tanya's grandparents, Dick and Miriam Handley, accompanied her that day. Bye, be careful. She's a sweet little girl. We're not on the same wavelength all the time, but that's to be expected. She knows we love her, and we know that she loves us. Sharon Catardis was a close friend of Tanya's mother. I arranged to have Sharon dive with her because she is an experienced diver. She is an assistant instructor. She knew the dive site well. We felt she would be the best person to have Tanya buddy with. Car, you got the water already? Yeah, it's I knew her uncle and her mom were very good divers, and she'd been on several dives in California and Florida. So I was pretty confident that she knew what she was doing. Visibility is not that great, and it is very cold. But when you're landlocked and there's not a beautiful ocean or anything else to go diving in, and you love to dive, you're going to go diving in what you have available. I was checking on Tanya, making sure everything was okay. She controlled her buoyancy very well, so she seemed pretty comfortable at that point. We had gotten down to about 30 feet. We're the lowest temperature of the water is around 35, maybe. I turned and kind of wrapped my arms around and gave her that signal. And she gave me back, like, yes, it's colder down here. But at that time, I didn't take it that she was cold herself. So we went ahead and continued. I had a premonition that Tanya should not dive. And I felt so strongly about it that we called her mother and said, I just don't feel comfortable doing this. We don't want to have this responsibility. We had a lot of phone conversations back and forth, and I said, go ahead and let her. I'm giving her my permission. If anything happens, it'll be my fault. I won't blame you. At a certain point, she tugged on my fin. I turned around and looked at her and realized that she didn't have a regulator in her mouth. So I automatically gave her mine and then took my ex there. I looked over her shoulder and tried to find out what was wrong, where her regulator went to. And I saw that her tank had slipped out of her BC and was down quite far. But we were so close and we were buddy breathing together that I couldn't reach around her and pull up her tank. So I made the decision to come up and see if we can get it resolved at the surface. Next. I knew if I let go, then the air would have to go with me and she wouldn't have anything. 